Good morning. Glad to be here. Our first selection is uh, Backwater Blues by Bessie Smith. And uh, just a few words about uh, Bessie as a composer and a singer. Uh, she was an American blues singer, as I'm sure most of you know, and nicknamed, nicknamed the Empress of the Blues and the most popular singer of the 1920s and 30s. She wrote and recorded the song Backwater Blues in 1927, and while it has long been associated with the great Mississippi flood of 1927, closer accounts confirm that it was written about a flood uh, on Christmas Day in 1926 in Nashville, Tennessee. And for those of us that live near rivers, uh, it, it is recorded that the river rose 56 feet. <laughs> wow. So that would conjure up some blues, I think. Yeah. days and the sky turned black as night Oh, it rained five days and the sky turned black as night Oh, there's trouble taking place way down in the lowlands tonight Oh, I woke up this morning and I couldn't get out my front door Hey And I couldn't get out my front door Well, it was so much trouble Making a poor girl Making a poor girl wonder where she wanna go Across the pond Well They They rode A little boat About five miles Across the pond And I I packed up all my things the boys, they row the boat along. Where I 
pack my things and go. Oh, yeah. Well, the backwater blues, they cause me to pack my things and go. Cause my house fell down and I I can't live there no more Well, there was thunder and lightning And the rain, the rain began to pour The rain began to pour Poor, poor, poor. I say when it's thunder and lightning, and the wind, and the wind begins to blow. Oh Lord, there are so many thousands of people that don't have nowhere to go. Thank you. Thank you very much, Candida. That was a treat for me. Uh, this is a new addition to our program, and it's really fun to play this for you. We're actually playing in public for the very first time, so thank you for your encouragement. <laughs> Our next person we're going to introduce today is an Israeli poet. Um, her name is Rachel Blustein, or Blustein, uh, if she would live here. Um, she's a Russian-born poet, uh, born to a very wealthy family. Maybe I'm going to ask. She was born to a very wealthy family uh, in Russia. And on her way to study in Europe with her sister, they made a little stop in Israel at the time, at um, 1909, just before the First World War, when the uh, first, wave, first and second wave of immigration to Israel was happening. Uh, Rachel and her sister, Shoshana, fell in love with the um, spirit of uh, farming, the spirit of newness, and all the exciting things that hap happened at the time in Israel, and they decided to stay and make Aliyah. Aliyah is... Um, um, is an expression that we use for Jewish people from the diaspora coming to Israel to settle it. So she became an Israeli uh, poet, and very quickly, although she had very rudimentary Hebrew at the time, she taught in a kindergarten class, and very quickly she learned the Hebrew s um, language so well that she started writing songs in Hebrew. Um, the song that I'm um, I chose to compose for, uh, for you today is called Chaitz. Chaitz means barrier. And I'm going to read from my notes here because I want to get it right for you. So the song is written in Hebrew. It was written right after uh, Rachel lost her mother uh, to the um, uh, tuber tuberculosis. And uh, she was touched with a lot of sadness. She felt very removed from the rest of the world. And that's why the title of the song is Barrier. Um, I'm going to sing it in Hebrew. But I want to give you a little bit of um, translation. It's not a poetic one, but just um, a content one. Uh, I remember when I was still an infant, I experienced unexplained sadness. And she's relating to her disposition as a shy kid that really loved to hang out with her mother. Um, then her mother passed away when she was 16, and the sadness was an instant companion. Um, there is a barrier between me and the rest of the world. And it continued to be like that. She uh, had a very short life. She died at um, the age of 41. And uh, she as well died from tuberculosis. But she, she wrote so much on her short lifespan that she became uh, something uh, close to a national uh, poet in Israel. <coughs> One, two, three, four. 
next piece that we're going to present is actually um, a poem uh, it's turned into a poem song that was written actually for me by um, a wonderful poet friend of mine um, his name is Everett Hoagland I don't know if anybody uh, knows that name he's a Professor Emeritus at uh, UMass Dartmouth and was also the former Poet Laureate of New Bedford, Mass, which is where I'm from. And uh, he wrote this for me as I graduated from UMass Dartmouth in 2005 um, with my degree in music. And I am a second generation Cape Verdean American. And um, so he wrote this song to, uh, to honor a little bit of who I am and um, who I have become. It's called Some of Me, and you'll also hear me say un poco di tudo, which basically means a little bit of everything, which is what I am, a little bit of everything. about me and my people. Me? 
You can say as has been said and read in famous poetry, I am a part of all I have met. My people, who do you mean? Descendants of the people who were forcibly brought by sea from coastal Africa to Cap Verde as slaves when the islands were green. Unknown and new to most of humankind, or from enslaving, colonizing Portugal, or from Moorish Arabia, or Judea, or all the world ports of call. Who? Maybe someone like you. They are all parts of me. And I am part of them too. Un poco de tu. The people who make my folk music, my sea blue marnas, my jazz, my gospel, my world music, and pop too. Singers, musicians, music lovers of every hue. Maybe someone like you. They are parts of me and I am part of them too un poco de tu the people who keep on going no matter what make do and do without church going people who make a joyful noise unto the Lord on Sundays with a gospel shout and holler out amen maybe my friend maybe someone like you un poco de tu The people who like most before they stand and sing hymns to him under their church steeple on Sunday mornings just might like some loving deep into Saturday night. Oh yes, I am one of them and they are one in me too. Un poco de tu. people do you mean family we who were or are a sister or brother a beloved father or mother or one of our many mannies or other cousins by the dozens we are one another most particularly the people who like blues, as I do, or the reds, or green, or whatever. People who like summer warmth and fair weather, who do you mean? Do you mean to exclude or include? I haven't got a clue. All I know, and nos criolos, us Cape Verdeans, et tudo que imas are all that and much more too. Un poco de tu. Oh.
all people are all that and much more too. Un poco de tu. The sum of me. Un poco de tu. Obrigada. It was not only heaven and earth she had angered, but alas, she had offended love itself. Yet she had been warned that she would pay a terrible price for her transgressions, and that payment would soon be rendered at the intersection of her heart and soul. Thereafter, all about her grew cold and dark. Her every step was met with misery and woe. Hope, as a consequence, had abandoned her, or so it seemed. As for her salvation, it was not unlike an ancient myth. She was neither obliged nor disposed to believe in. Nevertheless, the prayers of the innocent shall not forever go unanswered. And it was thus that she was saved once more. Saved as it were by the hot felt and blameless invocations of her own children. The very same children she had forsaken on so many occasions when in the course of performing her most sacred duty she had tragically grown accustomed to taking her leave thank you when we moved in you said how good it was to see lights shining again in our small house you weren't alone yet Neither of you seemed old. Evening by evening, leaning on his hoe, I watched Dick, bent and lively, wielding his. Morning by morning, saw you hang your wash, a long line propped lopsided by a pole, shifted mid-morning, for the shifting wind. Hot days, late afternoons, perched side by side, you watched the traffic like a matinee, naming the whole world's business, or trying to, and probably told some knee slappers on us, your well-intentioned wayward neighbors who stayed awake all hours of the night or fell asleep and left the lights to burn. Now lamps set up on timers pretend to be you. Echoing, following room to quiet room, the predictable pattern of your widowhood. By my window, I still check across the lawn, hear your wry voice as clear as if you called. Something I still need, something 
I still might find there.